Welcome to all new subscribers. Thank you very much for the interest. Let's get right into it. This is an asteroid or let, let me talk about something. You see the piece on the right? It was like an apple bite. It looks like a planet with a piece missing out of it. And what's to the left of it? Could it be that part of the planet or it could it be debris? Are we looking at one object or are we looking at two objects? I'm very fascinated by this one. Um, it was seen over top of the moon when Aldebaran kissed the moon this summer, 2017, and what we're seeing is a beautiful array of red color, but in reality, taken down like this in high dynamic range and in black and white, we can see the clarity. Look at it now. There is debris around it, either debris, either debris or the object is just dark and we're not seeing that it's just one object. It could be two pieces, it could be one piece. I don't know, but this is something that is not small, it is very big. Whether it's close or not, that we just can't know. We can't know exactly. Um, I'll tell you one thing, is I've never seen it in the field of view over the moon, because it was about three times to four times the size of the moon um, with the cloud around it. Asteroid 2017 U1, <laughs> declared by NASA. Uh, in the lower atmosphere. Uh, thank you, by the way, NASA. Well, a quarter mile is the size that they say. It's always so ever so hard to judge the size of these objects. But, you know, guys, we're doing pretty good. You know, the channels are doing pretty good. And, you know, we're looking at this really close up. And obviously, it was only a speck in the sky. Yes, it was. But it was a red pearly speck that was invisible to the naked eye. And in the photo, uh, wow it was this big it was just humongous this beautiful unknown object that i call it visiting the sun basically an asteroid or a planet it can't be an asteroid it would be a planetoid uh no it's planet sized it's gigantic you know um i'm declaring by guessing possibly i'm saying it quietly bigger than earth you know why because it's like five percent of the sun <laughs> very big beautiful radiating object in the lower atmosphere but in the center we have this um, uneven object that looks pretty rocky and what we look around the edge here we see a lot of thick thick uh, gases or what maybe is possibly even part of the sphere the planet but when, when I see these big radiating lights like this in the sky, it doesn't mean that it's the whole planet that size. It could also mean that there's a light radiating around um, the object. Ever so interesting, you know. We don't know. And when we study up just a, a little bit of basics about this, I find we just really get into it, you know. Um, listen to what scientists are finding. Listen to the, the, uh, the controversial topics that scientists have amongst themselves in the world and you come to your own conclusions it's very interesting if you are interested in finding the truth and if you have something inside or maybe someone guiding you well just let it go let it pull you and i'm doing just that i'm showing what i'm finding without uh no matter what i say it is guys you know it doesn't have to be what i'm saying it is i'm just giving an extra analysis i'm like you i'm curious and i'm i'm guessing myself as what these things are right but like i said uh and oh yeah why do i keep cutting these out of the photos well i i don't uh these sometimes are on the edges of my photos half cut out or you know because I, I don't see them um and when i do see them yes there there are stars and this one for example very green, greenish hue that we're getting back. It looks like plasma billowing on the surface, cooling off star or a part of a planet that was smashed. I don't know, it's just so interesting finding these things that, guys, we don't find these things usually. I've never found them before. And no, I have not been doing this for 10 years, but in a year and a half's time, uh, really intensely looking daily, I mean, whoa, this is incredible. It happened spontaneously for me during the month of June. When it started in June, it just didn't stop. Objects barreling by the sun. Here's an x-ray, by the way. Look at the um, radiating uh, gases, no doubt. Radiation, smoke maybe, off the, uh, the top of uh, this object. 
Rigel star in the constellation of, of Orion. Guys, I'm showing this one again, different view, but I'm showing it even closer, even clearer. I love this star. I'm in love with the star and I'm in love for some reason with the constellation of Orion. And okay, let's talk about the star or the red X that's on this. Um, confirmed, not Nibiru. It is not uh, Rigel. It is um, it was calibrated. I know it's in constellation of Orion. It's not just a star I'm making up. It's um, the real system of five stars. You know, I didn't know that Rigel had five objects inside of them. And guys, I did not know that it was also rare that we did not see them. We will go see at least one very close and beautiful view of the surface of Rigel. It's just absolutely mesmerizing, guys. We're looking at beta. Orionis. It's the brightest um, star, generally the seventh brightest, sorry, star in the night sky. And the brightest star in the constellation, yes, of Orion. Periodically, it outshines uh, within the constellation by the variable Betelgeuse that we'll be going to see tomorrow. I have to get some more Betelgeuse up. Beautiful star. The magnification technique that I'm using is absolutely exquisite. These are real stars. They're not fake stars. They're calibrated stars. Uh, sorry, and photos. The photos are calibrated. So, yes, I am and I know that I am in a constellation. They're real photos. They're photos I'm getting from astrophotography, like anyone else could do, just applying my own technique to it. Rigel A, uh, Rigel B, um, a companion. Rigel B, 500 times fainter than the supergiant Rigel A, visible only with a telescope. I didn't use a telescope, guys. I really have to say a special thank you to all of you who are connecting with me. You're not going to regret it. Uh, the findings that happen here are absolutely amazing. Um, I feel I'm guided most often uh, to find these things, and it's never ending. It doesn't stop. And of course, now I'm doing the sun, the moon and the stars, so I'm always busy. And when it's a rainy day, I have plenty of footage, both footage and photography that I've not seen yet. This is a way of presenting photography. Now listen, we're basically zoomed up inside of the photo and we're creating a, a field of depth, um, a proper field of depth to be able to see it on different the website contributors are these magnificent people. And there are more contributors now. Everyone who's stopping by here is contributing to my research and work, and I greatly appreciate the efforts, the shares. Guys, I'm not used to not answering all the comments. Please know that I will somehow be able to get through them all. And if you really have to reach me for something important, Bruce Schwartz, 75, a commercial, gmail.com or on Facebook, Bruce sees all the Bruce sees all swords. Sorry, look me up, guys. WSO YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for interacting with me, everyone. Please take the time if you would like to see what others are finding out in the sky and what Steve Olson is finding out. Um, and if you want to interact with the magnificent community, they're probably a lot of them are already here right now, and they're coming and flooding our channel. And these are the great people that we're seeing in the comments. Thanks a lot. I love you all, guys. Check out WSO YouTube channel.